Hi everyone, my name is Nicolette Gooding. I am a Master's of Social Work student at the University of Toronto, currently completing my practicum with For a Safer Space. Today I will be sharing information about anti-Black racism and how it can affect ourselves and also those of Black and African descent communities. I understand this is a deep topic and this PowerPoint presentation will not encompass all there is to know regarding anti-black racism, but rather it is to start a point to begin thinking and reflecting on this very important social justice issue. So what is anti-black racism? Anti-black racism is defined as policies and practices rooted in, for example, Canadian institutions such as education, healthcare, justice that mirror and reinforce beliefs, attitudes, prejudices, stereotyping, and or discriminatory practices towards people of black and African descent. Back in the 1400s, when the Portuguese enslaved Africans, they coined the term Negro. This word was translated as black and used to describe the people living in Africa. At that time, people did not see themselves as belonging to the same race as all others in the same Saharan region. Of course, they also did not see themselves as belonging to an inferior social group, and the Portuguese described the people living on the continent as uncivilized and attempted to map this lie to the physical attributes of their blackness. And while the term white was not formally named, the Portuguese and other European colonizers later became identified under the umbrella term of white and quote unquote civilized by virtue of not being labeled black and quote unquote uncivilized. This justified the transatlantic slave trade of black people and those of African descent, a history that still lives with us and those communities today. In short, blackness is the antithesis of whiteness. The definition of white during the period of the US cattle slavery went so far to specify that a white person did not have a drop of black blood. So it would make sense that the direct opposite of whiteness is blackness and the police's design to uphold white supremacy have also been the very policies and sought and in which many ways seek to harm blackness and black communities as a whole. The suppression of black people directly maintains the privilege, purity and the power of white people. This is one of the reasons that on a spectrum of white to black, people generally experience more power and privilege the close in proximity to whiteness they are, and less power and privilege the close in proximity to blackness they are. More than 400 years of unresolved anti-black policies is the reasons we see the black community experiencing the highest level of police brutality. Perhaps the most brutal form of anti-black racism is the historical lynching. Lynching is defined as someone being put to death without court or legal sanction. And according to the Equal Justice Initiative, lynchings were violent and public acts of torture that traumatized black people throughout the country and throughout centuries. Lynching took place in the United States before the Emancipation Proclamation, but it increased sharply before the period of the 1800s to 1940 as African Americans sought to get freedom. It was largely tolerated by the state and federal officials to harm these communities in forms of lynching. Historically, police were complicit with this lynching, whether by participating by themselves or actually allowing the violence to take place right in front of them. In fact, as many as 75% of lynchings have had the direct or indirect assistance of law enforcement. And we see police involvement and a complicity in these killings today, which again, reinforce the mentality and violence against black and African descent communities. Racism can cause frequent stress on the body and trigger very unhealthy coping mechanisms such as smoking, which will again lead to disease. A study investigated the possibility of links between Canadians' race, experiences of discrimination, and risk for diseases such as high blood pressure found black Canadians were almost two times more likely than white Canadians to be treated badly or with less respect. Frequent experiences of discrimination were linked with a greater chance of obesity and lower self-rated health. 
In Toronto, for example, Black Canadians often face service deserts, a lack of safe, inexpensive, and effective health care and community services in their close proximities. In a report about the sexual health education and services need for Toronto youth, also found that Black youth were the only group of youth that pointed out racism as a key factor preventing them in using sexual health clinics. Acknowledging anti-Black racism exists and that it has an impact on the health and well-being of Black Canadians is essential. Eliminating anti-Black racism requires support from all levels of government, institutions, businesses, schools, health care services, social services, and community resources. Take a look at how even you yourself, where you work, or how everything around us is accessible to Black Canadians. Join the Black Health Alliance in working towards finding ways to address anti-Black racism in order to prove the way health and the well-being of Black Canadians matter. When governments and healthcare and social service organization employees and community work members gather together to eliminate anti-Black racism in healthcare and beyond, all Canadians benefit we must center blackness and anti-black racism. Everyone must lift up anti-blackness because it is the specific type of racism, again, anti-blackness, that must be centered if racism itself is ever to be defeated. Important things to remember is that racism shapes all of us. And it's important to educate ourselves as things change. And once you acknowledge something, you can begin to explore how you can support in solving the problem. And lastly, speaking up and doing your part. As often, those of color or those in those unsafe situations are often the ones having to speak up against these injustices. To be effective, all society and and all communities are needed to do this part together. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful. And take care.